Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, Nigeria is on course for presidential polls this weekend. Last Saturday's vote was postponed for a week at the last minute, but officials say that this time it's all systems go. Also, Senegal's also due for polls. President Macky Sall's hoping for a second term from Sunday's election. Candidates on all sides are wooing religious leaders as their voices carry a lot of weight in their communities. And we hear from a Kenyan activist whose work in changing attitudes amongst Maasai communities on female genital mutilation is reckoned to have saved about 15,000 girls from having to undergo the practice. Nice Nailente Lengete is campaigning, has saw, seen her named as being one of Time magazine's 100 most influential people of 2018. But first, Nigeria's Electoral Commission says that it's second time lucky for the rescheduled elections and that they will go ahead this weekend. Presidential and parliamentary polls were supposed to happen last Saturday, but on the morning of voting were pushed back by a week. The delay was blamed on logistic holdups. President Mohamedou Buhari is up for re-election for the ruling APC party. His main rival is the opposition PDP's Atiku Abubakar. Both sides have been accusing each other of trying to rig Saturday's vote. Chika Odua tells us more about what a difference a week makes. There's a lot of anxiety here in Nigeria about just what is going to happen on Saturday. Uh, Nigerians are wondering if the Independent Electoral Commission will actually be able to deliver to the Nigerian people what it has promised, and that is a free and fair, credible election. Uh, even politicians have come out to voice their doubts, voice their concerns, including the president, Muhammadu Buhari. Uh, earlier this week, the president gave a very sound warning to anyone who is planning to rig the elections, anyone who's planning to uh, steal any ballot boxes at the polling stations. He even ordered police and military officials to, quote unquote, be ruthless to anyone who is seen doing anything suspicious at the polling station. So there's a lot of tension in Nigeria. And Nigerians really just want this election to, go, to come and go so that we can get back to our normal lives. But the Electoral Commission is guaranteeing that everything is going to go on time and that Nigerians will be able to have confidence in what will happen on Saturday. Chico Odo there for us in Abuja. Well, Senegal is also just a few days shy of a presidential vote. President Macky sounds hoping for an outright win in his bid for a second term on Sunday. As candidates try to gather votes, the opinions of religious leaders go a long way. Our correspondents sent us this report. The holy city of Touba is home to the most prominent Muslim brotherhood in Senegal, called the Mourid. No candidate can afford to ignore it on the campaign trail. Presidential hopefuls come here one by one to seek prayers from the religious leader and to present their platform in hopes of getting his endorsement. Even implied support can impact the vote of the Brotherhood's followers. It's a tradition that also means a lot to many voters. You can't lead Senegal if you don't believe in God. Whatever the level of impurity of the person that wants to become president, there has to be a minimum of faith or belief. You have to charm that constituency to get a few more votes. In Touba, the religious leader's staff reject the idea he might influence the election. No, there are no instructions given for the election. The chief of the Mourid in particular, who I'm close to, is neutral. That's important, but it doesn't mean that in his heart he won't choose one or the other whose program he approves of. The influence of religious leaders over young voters has diminished, according to this researcher. However, it remains a tradition rooted in Senegalese culture. The role of religion is a constant, as is the fact politicians are aware of its influence over voters. The influence of religion over public opinion is important. Now, whether mathematically that translates into votes in elections, that's the big question we're working on, and we don't have a specific answer. In Senegal, 95% of the population is Muslim and the majority of them belong to one of the country's main Muslim brotherhoods, the Mourid, the Tidiane, Layen or Hadria. 
Well, Kenyan human rights activist Nice Nailente Lengeti's work in trying to stop the practice of female genital mutilation won her a place last year on Time magazine's list of the 100 most influential people in the world. She herself narrowly escaped having to undergo cutting when she was a child because she ran away from the Maasai village in which she lived. Today, her work in trying to change attitudes in Kenya to FGM has saved an estimated 15,000 girls around the country from the cut and child marriage. In 2014, Maasai leaders even declared cutting would be abandoned. Well, earlier, I asked Nice Lengete whether she was surprised by the success that she's had with the conversations in communities she's been trying to get to stop FGM. I was surprised because I was not really waiting for it to happen that fast. But remember, in the community that I'm coming from, the Maasai community, you cannot assume the position of male leadership. As women, we cannot decide for anything, even for our own body. It, decision is made by men. So as much as we are talking about female genital mutilation or any form of gender-based violence, remember it's not a women issue. Men also need to be involved so that uh, they need to understand the importance or of marrying these uncircumcised you know, women, they need to understand the importance of taking their daughters to school. And even for the boys when they are growing up, remember in future their husbands, in future their fathers. How do we teach them also to respect women, not just to protect women from female genital mutilation or child marriage? So what exactly is the strategy you use when you go into a new community? Because you also work for, so currently you work for AMREF yes. Health Africa, mm -hmm. you, uh, and you run a project that goes from village yeah. to village trying to convince people to stop yeah. FGM. Because even yeah. though it was officially stopped, yeah. it, still, it still gets yeah. carried out. Yeah. What is the strategy you use when you meet a new community? Uh, what we do with the support of Amref Health Africa, remember this is about changing behavior. This is about changing attitude. And this is a culture that has been there for hundreds of years. So change does not take or happen in a day. So patience is really key. So what I've been really trying to do is to raise awareness among both women and men and also girls to understand their rights. But morely is to it's a look at it on a human rights-based approach because the law is there, but it's not enough. We re really need to have community dialogues with the community member. It's about gender equality again. It's about uh, investing again in education for girls the same way we are giving boys education. But what we've also been able to do is to help the community to come up with an alternative rights of passage, which is a community-led movement that is simply saying we have what is good in our culture. How can we retain that? And in the whole process of female circumcision, what is wrong is the cut. Let us remain with our beautiful culture. What is wrong, we do away with it. And that is what we want to replace with education. So that is simply what I've been doing. My work basically daily is just going to different communities and talking to community members. And how is your message generally received by the girls themselves? I mean, if you imagine you're talking about a, a communities where girls are um, very are not able to challenge men's positions mm -hmm. and their one moment mm -hmm. of being in the limelight is mm -hmm. this moment of of going through the rite of passage mm -hmm. how do you convince them that it's not in their best interest mm -hmm. and it's not necessary uh what we are really trying to do first of all they need to understand the dangers you know what uh what health consequences is it bringing to these women and girls uh Again, they also need to understand how is it, uh, you know, we are really left behind economically because education is not for girls. It's Circumcision is done as a rite of passage from girlhood to womanhood. That means girls don't have a chance to go to school. They are married at that early age, either 12 years or 13 years. So how do they realize the value of the girl child, invest in their education so that they can also make better and informed decisions? And that is what we've been doing with these communities. Nice, Lange, nice La, Nailante Lengete speaking to me there a little earlier on. Well, finally, Amnesty International has condemned Madagascar's prisons as being cruel and inhuman. In 129 detainees died in 2017. 52 of them were only in pre-trial detention. Authorities have been trying to make improvements, but progress has been slow. Our team sent us this report. The inmates restlessly sleep crammed into one small cell. Every hour, a guard claps his hands, a signal for the curled up men to change position. 
Amnesty International recorded the footage in Madagascar last year. The video caused outrage when it was made public. It's since become more difficult to document conditions inside the country's prisons. We were only allowed to film here, in the under-18 building of Antananarive prison. Like 80% of the detainees, 17-year-old Finn is still waiting for his trial. We cannot show his face. There are more pre-trial detainees than convicted detainees. Trials take too much time. For example, I've been waiting eight months. We suffer a lot because it's a confined area and the number of detainees is increasing. He is afraid of falling ill because of the overcrowding. Since the end of last year, over 900 people have already died on the island in an outbreak of measles. Here, a lot of people are sick. Some have typhoid, fever, measles. We're sick because of the bad hygiene. We are too many people here. It's too crowded. There's not enough air. 53 of us sleep in this cell. Today, Finn will enjoy a brief moment of respite. A group of volunteer artists are organizing a one-day festival with several workshops. Finn has chosen dance. I'm happy. I'm not frustrated like every other day. I'm so happy. I'm like a free man today. It's like I was given a second life. Entertainment like this is available to prisoners about six times a year. They are malnourished, they have no entertainment, they have nothing. So it is our way to give a bit of happiness to those children, to those detainees. A few hours of happiness, but a much longer wait for any real improvement. The prison system is desperately underfunded. In a bid to deal with malnutrition and overcrowding, the prison budget is due to go up by 1.5 million euros this year. Well, that's it for Eye on Africa. Thanks for joining us. Do that again if you can. Take care.